In this presentation, I want to talk a little bit about exposure in our cameras and the basic uh, techniques that we need to do uh, for setting up the exposure for our cameras. I kind of want to start off talking about some of the basic parts of the camera when we're thinking about um, how a camera works and how we're taking pictures with it and all. And you know, uh, when we think back to the 1800s and some of the early cameras, uh, there were really some very, very basic components for being able to capture pictures. Um, those basic components kind of like the, the light type box that was used to help control the lighting within the camera itself. You needed a lens that was going to project that image onto whatever it is that you were going to capture, which is the other portion there that either the sensor in our new cameras or uh, in other times we were using film to be able to record those images. Then we had two controls for how much light gets through to that sensor. One of them being uh, the shutter, which basically opens and closes kind of like a valve controlling the amount of light that enters through the lens to get to the sensor. And the other control is the aperture, which is kind of like the size of the pipe. Uh, so like if you're using, you know, if you're trying to pump water, uh, if you're using a, a garden hose, only a certain amount of water can pass through that garden hose because of the size of it. But if you're using a fire hose, you can let a whole lot more water through in the same amount of time because it's a lot larger uh, size for being able to work with that. And so really those two basic things, the shutter and the aperture are what we use to be able to control the amount of light that gets into the camera, okay? Um, and those are the two controls that we're really working with the most uh, for being able to get the proper exposure for our photographs. So let's take a look at those two things. Uh, the first one we're talking about is the shutter. And again, the shutter controls the amount of light let into the camera by the length of time that it's open. Uh, and there's a couple of different kinds of shutters in cameras. Uh, some of the older cameras that we have had what was known as a leaf shutter. And basically it had these kind of leaves that would close down to the center. And when uh, you open the shutter, it would open from the center out to the edges and then close back down again uh, to control the light. Most of our digital SLR cameras have uh, what's known as a focal plane shutter. And a focal plane shutter is more like, uh, I don't know, kind of think of it like uh, curtains where you're opening the curtain to let a certain amount of light through. Uh, and they have different looks to the pictures a little bit by the different kinds of shutters that are out there. But basically we have those two kinds of shutters. Okay, And so the shutter is there to help control the amount of time that, the that light is coming through uh, to get to the sensor. Okay. Uh, and we usually have it broken up into kind of a standard scale that we think of. I usually will call this by, you know, our, our standard exposures or normal exposures for shutter speeds. And uh, basically in most cameras it goes from about one second as the longest exposure that it's open on down to one thousandth of a second. And some cameras actually go down even to one four thousandth of a second. Very, very short period of time that the shutter is open, letting light through uh, into the camera there. Okay, so uh, again, it's controlling that length of time. We call it usually shutter speed uh, on our cameras. Uh, we have some standard shutter speeds that you see listed over on the side. Uh, and these are the ones I really want you to remember here uh, because these are the standards that have been used for decades in our cameras, uh, in previously in film cameras and you'll still, still see these in our uh, digital cameras as well. So going from one second, and again, you'll notice that we'll kind of cut them in half each time. A little variation in there, but one second, one half second, quarter second, one eighth second, a little variation here, one fifteenth of a second, one thirtieth of a second, one sixtieth, then a little variation again, one one twenty-fifth, one two fiftieth, one five hundredth and one one thousandth. Now the reason that they had those two little variations in there were that uh, some of the older cameras had mechanical shutters and they weren't really super accurate. So uh, they made the little variation to help make the numbers a little bit more easy to calculate, so to speak. You know, the one twenty fifth and two fiftieths easier than uh, one twentieth and uh, two fortieth of a second. 
Okay, so those are our standard shutter speeds, and those are the ones I really want you to remember. Now, when you're working with your camera, you'll see these actually in your camera. Okay, and it'll display these inside the camera. If you're looking through the viewfinder, like on a digital SLR camera or some film cameras, you'll see it listed. You'll see it there on the left-hand picture. Uh, the 90 would be 1 90th of a second. Uh, on the digital cameras, uh, we usually see it on the display on the back of our cameras, or it may be up onto the top of your camera, uh, or you may actually see it in the picture um, uh, window where you actually view the images there. Uh, a lot of the older film cameras have it on the dial on the top. You see that on the bottom picture where you can see um, those standard shutter speeds listed on there too. Okay, so we have those. So again, the standard shutter speeds control the amount of light uh, by the length of time that it's open. Uh, as we move from one full shutter speed to the next one, we also may call that full stop. And I'll kind of explain that a little later on when we get to f-stops here. Okay, so we're going in basically uh, a full stop. You're either doubling the light, amount of light or cutting the amount of light in half that's reaching the film or the sensor, okay? So for example, one second, if we cut it in half, we go to one half second. So uh, it's half the amount of light or one second is twice as long as one half of a second, okay? So full f-stop uh, is what we sometimes call those or full stop between each one. So again, here are those standard uh, shutter speeds again. Uh, one, one half, one quarter, eighth, fifteenth, thirtieth, and so on as the standard ones uh, for the light that gets into the sensor. Okay, and those are the ones I want you to kind of remember uh, for things later on. Now, the other control we have is the uh, aperture. Okay, and the aperture again kind of controls that intensity by controlling the size of the opening within the lens to let more or less light to. Okay, and so uh, you can see here on the lens that's in the picture here how uh, the small opening, we can make the opening very, very small to make, let just a little bit of light through, or we can have it wider open to let more light through. Okay, so in certain situations where the sun is really, really bright, we may want to choose that smaller opening, or if we're shooting in really, really low light, we may want to open it up to the larger size. Uh, to let more light through to get the better exposure. Okay, and on the right side you see the standard f-stops here. Okay, and these are some of the standard f-stops uh, that you will see. And the numbers are not real intuitive for what we're doing here, uh, but basically remember like for f-16 it's a smaller opening, and then as the numbers get smaller and smaller going on down to f-2.8, the opening gets larger and larger. It's kind of backwards from what you might think. Uh, but kind of think of it as a fraction, I guess, like F slash 16, F slash 11, F8, so forth on there. Okay? So, uh, again, that scale is broken up into F-stops, and these are considered the full F-stops, okay, that we may find on our cameras here. Uh, F16, F11, F8 is... Uh, twice as much light let through at f8 as f11, uh, and then 5.6, f4, f2.8. And the scale goes down a little further too, from 2.8 goes to 2.0, and then it can even go down to uh, 1.8, and it can go down to 1.4, uh, on down a little bit smaller in size as well. Okay. All right, again, uh, as we change from one to another, we're either doubling or cutting the amount of light in half. So in our cameras, we'll see these listed as well. Uh, in the viewfinder, you'll see it usually at the bottom end, uh, bottom end of the image where it will list the f-stop number or on the back of the viewfinder of the camera. You'll see it in the digital cameras or you'll see it in some cases on older lenses. They're actually listed on the lens itself. The modern lenses don't have them listed directly on there because they're all electronic and are controlled within. All right, again, here's our list again. Here are some full f-stops that we can look at. Uh, 
uh, again, either cutting in half or doubling the amount of light, going from f1.4, which is a wide or open, all the way to f22. Now, one thing you will notice in our newer cameras is that you will see other stop numbers in between, okay? But the ones that I really want you to remember are the ones in the yellow, the full F stops, okay? Everything else are fractions of stops in between that you may see on your camera itself, okay? All right, good. So let's move on here. So we're using both the shutter and aperture to control the amount of light getting into the camera to the sensor, and both of those together help control the exposure, okay? And when we have uh, control over the exposure, we'll be able to get more predictable results in our pictures, and we're gonna get proper exposure in our pictures. Okay, so you're asking, well, what's proper exposure? Well, proper exposure is when we're able to see all the tones that we expect to see within the picture. Okay, so when we're uh, taking a photograph and we're looking, we expect to see skin tones look a certain tone. We expect to see shadow detail. We expect to see highlight detail in our photographs. And if our pictures are too light or too dark, we don't see that good detail. So for example, in the pictures here, you can see the picture of Marilyn. She's looking really good there with good skin tone. The light tones on her dress look really well. And then we look at the picture of the, the boats on the right side. And notice you can't see hardly any details at all in the shadow areas within the picture. It looks, looks really, really dark. We just see kind of an outline in the picture, okay? So it's telling us that the picture is probably underexposed. There wasn't enough light getting through to be able to get proper exposure in the picture here. So let's take a look again here. So what happens if we do get proper exposure? Again, we see the difference between the canoes here. We now can see a really good shadow detail in the background, in the foreground, that's telling us that things are the way that they're supposed to be with the picture, okay? And that's really critical for us to be able to get good exposure for uh, our photographs, okay? So how do we know when we've got proper exposure? Well. We have a device built in our camera that's there to help us be able to make sure we have proper exposure. And, and that tool is our light meter, okay? And the light meter is basically there to be able to help measure within the image to make sure we can see those details in the highlights and the details in the shadows as well, okay? And that light meter provides us with the information about what f-stop and what shutter speed we should use to be able to get proper exposure, okay? So when we know the proper shutter speed and the proper aperture, that's going to give us a good exposure value to give us good proper exposure for our photographs. Okay, now, so what is the light meter? Well, the light meter is basically a tool that's built into our cameras. You can actually have a handheld meter as well. It's measuring the light, uh, either the light that's falling onto a subject, which would be an incident meter, or it's measuring the light reflected from the subject back toward the camera. And that's a reflective meter. And that's the kind that's built into all of our cameras, whether it's a point and shoot camera, or if it's a digital SLR, it has a built-in light meter to help measure the light to make sure that it's getting proper exposure. So what's it doing? Well, it's taking a look at the light being reflected from the subjects. You know, the lights, the darks, the middle tones, all those things are bouncing back toward the camera lens uh, when we're getting ready to take the picture. And it takes all of those tones and averages them together and makes an assumption. It assumes that, okay, well, if I take and average all the light tones and all the dark tones and all the middle tones together, uh, that middle gray should be the proper exposure for the picture. So it's measuring that and then making that assumption that uh, on average, that middle gray means that it's getting proper exposure. And then it tells you what shutter speed and f-stop combination will give you the proper light for taking your photographs. Okay, all right. So now, let's take a look here at how our shutter speed and our f-stop 
work together because if you remember both of them work kind of similarly they either cut the amount of light in half or double the amount of light so let's take a look at some examples here to understand how those two can work together to be able to give us some choices when we're taking our photographs all right so let's take a look at this example here. We're looking at the photograph here and uh, we can see good detail in the picture here. Uh, and in this case, the light meter is telling us that we could use 1 500th of a second, which is a really short time, with f2.8, which is a really wide open aperture to get enough light for proper exposure. Okay, so that's the settings that it told us it would make for a good exposure. Well, let's say that we decided that we didn't want to listen to the meter and do something a little different. What if we change the f-stop from f2.8 to f4? What is it going to look like? Well, f4 is a smaller opening, so it's going to let less light through. So more than likely, the picture is going to look darker overall. Okay? Darker overall in the photograph. So. Changing that to f4 means the aperture is too small. Again, our exposure is out of balance, and we have an uh, underexposed picture. So let's go back here again. We'll go back to our 500th at 2.8. And what if we changed our shutter speed and went from 1 500th to 1 250th of a second? Okay, 250th is a longer exposure time, means we get more light into the picture and we end up making our photograph look too light. Okay, again, out of balance for our photographs. So, let's go back again to our original 502.8. What if we changed both of them? We go from 500 to 2.8 and change it to 1 to, uh, 250th. That's a longer exposure time, but also change the aperture to f4, okay? We're cutting them in half in both places. What happens to exposure? Well, they're, they're the same. Okay, our image looks the same between the two exposures here because one's letting twice as much light through and the other is cutting it in half. Let's try it one more time. Let's go down to 120, uh, 1 125th of a second and 5.6. Okay, same thing. We still have proper exposure, but we could choose a different shutter speed and f-stop combination to get good results. All right, so what if we made a goof here and we only changed our f-stop again and went to f8? All right, so again, dark photograph. We're out of balance again. We can see that the picture just doesn't look quite right. So we needed to change both of the settings, shutter speed and f-stop. So let's go ahead and change that shutter speed 160 to f8, and we've got the same quality in the picture. All right, on down a little further, 30th at f11 gives us the same exposure. Okay, what would be next? Well, we could go down one more to a 15th at f16, again, giving us good proper exposure. So what we're looking at is equivalent exposures. You can change if you change both the shutter speed and the f-stop in combination, we can be able to keep the exposure amount the same all the way through so that they look the same in the pictures. All right, and this little chart kind of shows how we can break up. And again, the total amount of light, we can use either a short shutter speed and a wider open aperture or a longer shutter speed and a smaller aperture to be able to get the same exposure overall in our photographs. Okay, so again, talking about the length of the exposures uh, in our photographs, let's take a look at this one here. Um, what's wrong with this photograph? What do you see that might be wrong with it? And if you don't really see anything too different with it, well, here's one little clue you want to take a look at. Look at the shutter speed. Okay, so our shutter speed here is at 1 15th of a second. Now, in our cameras when we're taking photographs, generally speaking, we don't want to use uh, a shutter speed lower than 1 60th if we want to keep things nice and sharp, if there's motion in the picture, okay? 
and probably if we we're using a fifteenth of a second, the picture would probably look more like something like this. Okay, where things are blurred in the picture because a fifteenth of a second is a long exposure time and we'll see some motion of things going on with it there. All right, so what if we didn't want that motion? Well, we could change our combinations okay, and go from a fifteenth of a second and maybe choose one five hundredth of a second at f2.8 okay, and get the same results as at 15th at F16. Okay? So, two different combinations, and that's one of the reasons that we look at using equivalent exposures because sometimes we may want to choose different settings to get different looks to our photographs. Sometimes we may want to have that long exposure so that we can have blurring in the picture. Sometimes we may want to be able to have uh, faster speed so we can stop the action. And that's our choice. We can be able to do one or the other to be able to get good predictable results. All right, so what are we doing with our exposure here? Well, again, proper exposure is going to give us predictable results and it's going to let us be able to take photographs and change the look of them as well by changing the settings. Okay, so for example here, uh, the hummingbird, we can see that the wings are almost stopped with a fast shutter speed, whereas with the night photograph, we need to use a slow shutter speed, and you really see how the water fountain there is flowing in the picture too, okay? All right, so we're using those two things here, and you know, we talked about the shutter speed changing how our photographs look. Our aperture also will change how our photos will look as well, okay? Um, when we change the, uh, the aperture in our lenses, we will change also how much appears to be sharp in the picture. We call that the depth of field. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. All right, so talked about shutter speeds. We talked about f-stops for controlling exposure. We talked about the light meter controlling and measuring the amount of light. One last thing that helps us control the exposure is our ISO. Okay, and ISO stands for International Standards Organization, but it really refers to the sensitivity of our camera sensor to light. Okay, um, when we were shooting with film, we had to choose film that was rated for a specific ISO. So uh, you might choose a film that was rated for shooting outdoors, had a slower, uh, lower ISO, or you might choose uh, film for shooting indoors that had a higher ISO. Uh, those choices were yours for being able to choose that. For additional cameras it's really nice because we can change it on the fly uh, as we're going. So ISO speed refers to the sensor's sensitivity to light. The, the higher the number, the more sensitive it is to light and we'll be able to record um, the same image with less light falling on it. So. For example, if you're shooting pictures in low light conditions like in a basketball gym, higher ISO will help you be able to use uh, faster shutter speeds okay, for being able to take pictures. Uh, the units usually fall anywhere from uh, like ISO 100, 200, 400, 800. The higher the number, the faster the exposure time you can use for your pictures. Okay. In some of our cameras, the ISO now is going up even as high as 10,000 which means that we can shoot in really, really low light levels and still be able to stop motion in the pictures. Okay, And as we're doubling the number, it's like our shutter speeds. When you go from ISO uh, 100 to 200, you're actually gaining one stop of light for being able to take our photographs. Now, like a lot of things, there are some trade-offs here. Okay. When we're shooting with, with uh, higher ISO settings in our cameras, we have a tendency to get some things that are, that's called noise in our photographs. It looks like a graininess or sometimes little spots of color showing up in our photographs. Uh, it reduces the detail that you may see within the photographs. So generally speaking, if you're shooting like outdoors and you have plenty of light, you'll want to use a lower ISO number. 
If you're shooting in low light situations, you may have to use those high ISO, but you can expect sometimes to see some, um, some noise, uh, some, some problems with the picture when you use those higher ISO settings there. Okay, so when we're taking our pictures, uh, again, we're basically choosing the ISO for, that we want to use for the lighting conditions that we're in, and then our light meter is going to tell us the proper shutter speed and f-stop uh, or aperture for taking our photographs. All right, so a little recap here, talking about uh, the different things we've covered. We talked about the light meter, how it measures the light. Uh, we talked about how our shutter speed and f-stop control the amount of light getting to our camera sensor. We have the ISO, which changes how our sensor is sensitive to light, so we can raise the sensitivity or lower it based on the conditions that we're in. And then our light meter tells us the proper shutter speed and f-stop for the lighting conditions that we're in. And we'll average the scene and the lighting to be able to give us a good guess at the exposure, shutter speed, and f-stop, so we can set our camera for being able to take our photographs with that.